a proud music heritage meets a modern sound. In Kenya, traditional and electronic musicians are collaborating to introduce a new kind of Kenyan music to the global stage. The future of music production is relying a lot more on picking authentic sounds of the past. When new technology meets old-fashioned talent, the results can be electrifying. This is Kenya's evolving electronic music scene. This is Inside Africa. Clubs across the African continent. Homegrown electronic music is enjoying its turn in the spotlight. I think the African electronic scene is the future. Emil Urgenot is a digital music producer from South Africa. He's excited by what he sees as the next big thing. It's a perfect match if you think about it because electronic music, you know, let's say for, for dancing and for clubs, is purely based in rhythm mostly. And African music is so rich with rhythms. Emil is a teacher and a taste maker and an ethnomusicologist as well. Like I think he, he studies deeply to understand musical cultures. Emil is always looking out for interesting sounds to mix into his music. Sounds that will surprise listeners and take them somewhere new. This hunt for new sounds has taken him far, traveling 4,000 kilometers to Western Kenya. Among a patchwork of tin-roofed houses and gardens peppered with maize and banana trees, he's headed to meet a tribe known for preserving its long musical traditions. The Luos play a very critical role in, generally, in the development of music in Kenya. Like, we cannot talk about music without speaking about Luos. From Dodo, through Benga, to Ohangla, to now Rubenga, which is a mixture of Rumba and Benga, to Rumba as well, like this Luo Rumba. I do not know any other community in Kenya that has been as experimental as the Luo with their music. The small town of Ugunja is the heart of traditional Luo music. In a roadside workshop off of the main drag, Olith Ratego is the perfect collaboration partner to introduce Emil to this isolated sound. He works here making furniture. It's a daily grind that helps pay the bills, but when he's not building beds and tables, he uses the workshop to practice his true passion. Olif designs his own musical instruments, often modeled after local instruments like the nyatiti. They come alive in his hands. A lot of people, they are playing that nyatiti. Because I'm a carpenter, I'm marrying woods, so I can make something who look like little nyatiti, look like uh, other instrument, little like that, kora, like that, but I need it to be on myself. So 
I said that I will make this instrument, yeah. He named this instrument a kodo. Kodo, I made with calabash and wood. This is, we call fishing strings. We use for, for made in kodo, yeah. And uh, this is tuner for the guitars. When I'm playing music, I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. If I can get somebody who promote me and lift me up. But the music business is a struggle as local interest in traditional music like his is waning. I think Olethe is one of the most underrated artists of our time. The people have not recognized the power of the talent that they have. So within their localities, they are underestimated. There's a big risk of the traditional sounds disappearing. And why is because the radio is the voice of the masses. And if you're making music that doesn't get to radio, it's almost like you're making music for waste. Therefore, the radios are not pushing and they're not providing a value chain for folk music. Digital music producer Emil has come here to Western Kenya to learn about Luo music and to collaborate with the best musicians around, like Olif. This has been a massive dream of mine for a very long time. I mean, even before Centuri, this has been a massive dream of mine to record and work with uh, traditional musicians. Olif is Emil's ambassador into this little known world of traditional Luo music. Together, they hope to bring its rare sounds to a whole new generation. In the green hills of Kenya's western province, the river Nzoia carves through the lush landscape. Its waters rush west toward Lake Victoria bringing people from all around to its shores. As a child, Ogoya Nengo knew that trips to the river were a time for song and for dodo. When I was young, my mother would take me to collect water. It was there, along the river, that she taught me to sing. Now, whenever I go to the river, I think of her. Dodo was a style of singing that was born out of the Luo's shared experience, a song of togetherness. Dodo is a celebration. It makes people happy. My mother used to call many people men and women, to our house and would sing dodo. They would share and drink and sing all night long. But as time passed, dodo faded slowly and was replaced with other kinds of music. I don't know about the future of this music, but my God who created me only knows where he will take the music in the future, but not me. Continuing their musical journey of discovery, two music producers have traveled hundreds of kilometers from Kenya's capital to hear and record Dodo in its original state. They've come here to Ogoya's home in Ugonja. Kenyan DJ Suraj Mundavia lives in Nairobi, and digital music producer Emil Uachenot works out of Johannesburg. It's a rare moment to be able to get Ogoya Nango to even agree to work with us, in my opinion, is a, is a very special moment. 
DJ Suraj records sets of traditional songs and vocals from across Kenya and uses the samples in his electronic music. I feel like as a Kenyan, I have to identify and I have to highlight my surroundings. How wide they are. Their goal, capture Ogoya's unique yet fading sound. The setup that we have basically is just one condenser microphone in the front and two overhead microphones on the back. They get, to, they get to a little bit of the room and the ambiance. I'm feeling very, very excited. I'm happy to be here with Emil to be able to, to get all these recordings and then see what we can do and make them into like actual productions of songs. With setup complete, it's time to begin recording. One of the reasons why I think Ogoya Nengo is so special is because there isn't many like her. Ogoya Nengo and the Dodo vocalists, the way they work is they have a, they have a special technique called the call and response. So they are, the, the whole song is not necessarily just one person singing. It's, very, it's several people coming together and interacting with each other, which is one of the reasons why I found it so special. Recording her in her house just had like so much more depth and like feel to it. These are like elderly ladies like with super energy, like crazy energy and it was like really cool to see, really cool. Goyanengo is bigger in terms of her talent as well as Olive outside of their rural village and not necessarily even in the Kenyan space. Emil and Suraj want to make sure that traditional vocals like Ogoya's are preserved and shared with the wider music community, a community that would be unlikely to hear her voice otherwise. But it's not just vocals they are interested in. Olith helped bring everyone together here to record traditional Luo instruments like the single-stringed Orutu and the powerful Ohangla drum. Like the traditional songs, some of these rare instruments are also at risk of being abandoned or replaced by newer modern music making. The need to preserve the art of instrument making is just as urgent. We have to realize that besides the people, there's also the instruments. And some of these instruments are going into extinction. Like for example, there's no single person who makes nyatiti in Nairobi today. If you want a nyatiti, we would have to order it to be made in Kisumu. And we would have to wait for a week for that to be made. So that instrument is, a, is under threat. Emil and Suraj reassemble their equipment in the home of one of the local musicians, who has also invited some of the best musicians around. Traditional samplers couldn't really do this, but now with software you can, you can do all this great stuff. Translating them into electronic formats is part of the preservation process. Like at least we have a digitally available sample. So if all these instruments get extinct in 50 years to come, we can always go back to the sample that was recorded in the year 2018 and say this is what the Nyatiti or this is what the Kodo sounded like. The process has also been beneficial to the musicians themselves. <laughs> It's a whole new way of hearing their old sounds. When I sang with those headphones on, I felt so happy and inspired. To tune an Ohangla drum, first, you have to build a fire. 
Then, place the drum directly over it. The drum head, made from the skin of the monitor lizard, tightens from the heat. After a few taps by a skilled drummer, this rare Kenyan instrument is ready. The drummer's name is Maombo, meaning to make people shake. He's a member of the Luo, a tribe known for their long history of song. For them, music is a source of pride. The Luos have retained a very particular place for their folk music. Here in the western Kenyan town of Ugunja, Maombo is about to join an unusual performance. South African digital producer Emil Uchenot has traveled here to record the sound from Luo traditional instruments. He now wants to jam together with the musicians and show them what the latest software can do with their captured sounds. In the house of one of the local musicians, he has set up an outdoor studio. As the musicians begin playing, Emil works with an instrument called a push controller. The push controller can allow you to play it like a, a piano, for example, so I could play chords on it, but I could also sequence where I would press play and like a drum sequencer, you know, lights would actually show you um, exactly what beat you're on and you'd be able to sequence in like a melody or pattern. From this advanced audio synthesizer, Emil can manipulate the recordings live, looping the pre-recorded instrumentals with the live vocals on top. We had two microphones set up and we had Agoya singing and we had the Uhandla drums performing and we would loop them. So once we had one loop down, then you know, everyone that was kind of improvising in this environment could hear, okay, this is the rhythm, we're establishing like the tempo, and then other musicians could sit in, have the microphones ready, and we could just record and just layer some loops. And then based on that, like, we have a whole kind of track kind of stemming from that now. <laughs> Hearing themselves integrated into this electronic performance is a totally new experience for many of the Luo musicians. I like the way they mix the instruments, but all the different sounds confused me. Sometimes I'm singing, it's not going with the beat because he's changing it around. It was tough for me to get used to. The real party begins. New age and old age, electronic and traditional, all jamming together. I was, you know, sitting and just like sampling as people were performing, creating live looping, you know, where everyone could just kind of feed off of that energy and it would just like constantly grow larger and larger. Back in Nairobi, it's time for these men to introduce the music to the masses. Emil and Olith are working on a new track, which they hope to perform tonight at a local venue. You know, this kind of music is enjoyable. Yeah, it's enjoyable because you can dance, yeah, you know? And uh, singing, even if you can sing with the, when you are, feel it, yeah? Yeah, so that's, I'm happy and I, I like, mm. if I can get the chance, I can, I can, I can like to sing a lot of the kind of this music. Olith tries his hands at the push controller, using it to play his own instrument. Yeah, when I hear the sound from my instrument here, and it's come very strange a little, and uh, I say, wow, 
because uh, I feel I like it. Till I told him that you can tune for me that because now I forgot that it's mine instrument. <laughs> it's the voice coming from my instrument. I forgot. I guess the idea is really for me to. Um, just kind of pay homage to Aleth and other instrument makers in my own way to just uh, create something that other musicians around the world can latch onto. Yeah. <laughs> it is not like mine, you know, uh, to play this mine is so easier for me. But you know, everyone has his talent. So from him, from our producer here, he know how to, to to play it, but me if I try, I get it so hard for my fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So In keeping with electronic music's tradition of collaboration and sharing, Emil plans to make this sound package available to other producers for free. He hopes it will inspire them to not only sample these new sounds but also give back. It's extremely important for me to, to give back to uh, the musicians and artists that I've worked with. So I recorded Olith's instrument and created this virtual like incarnation. And uh, the proceeds that would go in terms of it being donation based would then connect directly to Olith and Olith would be able to receive the funds for that for him and his family and also for him to be inspired to build new instruments, you know, because essentially that's the most important thing. That's why we're here. At the club, Suraj, Emil and Olith prepare to unveil the sounds they've captured and created to an entirely new audience. I hope that we can be having more and more projects like these that highlight amazing individuals like Ogoya and Olith. So that it can be easier for us to not only but survive in this industry, but also thrive in this industry. These artists are big influencers and taste makers across the continent. Therefore now, it's taking these sounds into the rest of the globe, and the rest of the globe is able to understand and connect with sounds that are coming from a very small place in Kisumu, and now it's playing on a global stage. It's a movement in the making, I would say.